Hey everybody, I'm gonna flip. Hi, it's uh, Michelle Tam again of Nom Nom Paleo. And I'm just gonna show you guys what I'm making for dinner and this is really what I'm making. <laughs> so um, this pan is still dirty from when I made the sofrito earlier. I don't know if you guys saw my last Periscope, but I think about two hours ago or an hour ago, I made sofrito, which is an Italian mirepoix. And I put it all in this silicone mold and I'm gonna freeze this and so then I will have these cubes to pop out to put in all my cooking but my pan is still dirty and I don't care because the stir fry I'm making this will just add flavor oh and if I guess if you guys don't know me um, I'm Michelle Tam of Nom Nom Paleo um, I have a blog I have a cookbook called Nom Nom Paleo food for humans and thanks for all the hearts so if you guys like this just tap on your screens because then I will keep doing this otherwise um, I'll stop. <laughs> anyway, weird, you're not color, but negative black and white. That might be on your end um, and how you're viewing it because I'm not in some alternate universe where I'm black and white. I was literally just watching that Periscope. Cool. Um, oh, and so what I have, so people have said, oh, I don't like that I only have 24 hours to watch these videos um, on Periscope. I am on catch.me.com, so K-A-T-C-H dot M-E. Actually, there's no com. <laughs> so it's just K-A-T-C-H dot M-E. And if you search for Nom Nom Paleo, you can see all my videos with the comments, but I'm also gonna be uploading these low quality videos to my YouTube channel, and so they'll be there forever if you guys want them. And, and catch.me slash Nom Nom Paleo. Oh, okay, so Henry's actually here um, from work off camera, <laughs> but so I guess it's catch.me slash nom nom paleo is how you can find them. Um, and so I'm just gonna make dinner. So I'm gonna make a garbage stir fry. People always say, oh, it's a garbage stir fry and it's whatever I have Hello. in my fridge. Um, and so I had some ground beef that's kind of been sitting there. I think it's still okay. Um, and then I had some like sauteed mushrooms that I had from a few days ago. I have some frozen kale. I have some zoodles. I'm gonna make it Asian-y flavored. So I have, um, you know, garlic, scallions. Someone asked here. where uh, the O's are. Oh, one of them is on the couch on an iPad. Cause on Fridays they're allowed, Fridays after five o'clock they're allowed to put like, um, you know, do screen time and then Owen is in the room watching TV, and I think he's watching Old Master Chef. I'm coming over for dinner. I don't know if I have enough for everybody. I only have like a pound of meat. So that's what I'm trying to do. We only have a pound of meat, which is not actually a ton of meat. Um, but I have a ton of vegetables. Um, so hopefully we'll What's have in the pan time. already is leftover sofrito. Oh, yeah. There's some leftover sofrito, which is just um, slowly sauteed onions, carrots, and celery. And that can add flavor to this. Um, but I just added a pound of ground beef. Oh, I love it. Yes, thank you for liking the Lego camera mount. Henry made that, my nerdy husband, who's off camera. Yeah, I kind of stole Lego bricks from the kids. Um, but it was funny, because I think, if you look at the scopes before that, I was struggling with the camera, and I couldn't figure out how to prop it. And so we came home from work, and I talked about how I had all these problems. He's like, oh, I think I can fix it. And then he went. That's exactly how I talk. That is exactly how you talk. Um, <laughs> he, he put this together and then I was like, oh, you know, Periscope started doing it in, yes, the camera did fall. Periscope started um, allowing people to shoot in landscape. And so then he's like, oh no, now I have to make a landscape one. So he has a landscape and a portrait one. Um, and so this is really low heat. I don't know why this is so I crank this up because I want, because we're all hungry and we're tired and it's Friday and I really actually would rather have um, takeout right now, but I have committed to cooking as often as possible. And I know this weekend we will be eating a lot out. So what Friday you doing, night. Molly? You cannot grab a snack right now. I'm making dinner. Except if it's seaweed, then you can have seaweed. Okay. Okay, so all I'm doing right now is I'm just um, breaking up the ground beef. I'm trying to... You don't need a spoon to eat seaweed. So 
I'm just uh, breaking up the ground meat. And once um, it's no longer pink, I'm gonna throw in the garlic and the ginger because I don't want the, I don't want either of those to burn. And so I just wait until this is all done. So let's see if there, you guys have any questions while this slow process is happening? I'll read them out. Okay. And I am gonna season this Asian flavored because that's how I roll normally. I have fish sauce, I have some coconut aminos. If you don't have coconut aminos and you tolerate soy, you can always have gluten What's free tamari. What's your favorite garbage stir fry vegetable? Oh, I don't care, whatever. I, I try to put in stuff that's quick cooking, like right now I have some frozen kale, because that I don't have to wash or cut or anything. Um, oh yeah, someone said a potato masher will break up the meat quickly. What's the best way to clean your cast iron? Oh, I just um, I just use a sturdy brush and hot water. Um, there's actually a really great post on Series Eats by J. Kenji Lopez Alt. Um, and he actually says soap is okay. So I know that a lot of people think you can never use soap, but on his post, you should just Google it because he debunks a whole bunch of uh, cast iron skillet um, myths. Somebody also asked whether you can make uh, Asian fried rice or Asian cauliflower fried rice in the Instant Pot. No, I don't think so. Anything that you would fry, you don't want to make in an Instant Pot. I mean, I guess you could use it on the saute function if you have no stove. But an Instant Pot really is for stuff that you would, you know, cook slow and slow um, to cut down the time. But, you know, I think with cauliflower rice, it can go from being hard to like mushy and gross pretty fast. And so you don't want to put that in an Instant Pot. Or just Asian rice. Uh, white rice. You can make white rice in an Instant Pot. I haven't because I think that um, I like to make it on the stove, but you know, a lot of people have really great rice cookers. Um, I don't know. I, I've, I've read mixed things about how white rice turns out in an Instant Pot. But that's just me, I haven't actually tried it. Oh, so it says it comes out terrible, so I see. That's why I haven't tried it. Oh, but then someone says it just only takes four minutes in an Instant Pot, so. Oh, see, the meat is all brown. Can you guys see that? I would lift it up, but I'm not here. <laughs> all right, so I have some garlic that I um, chopped up earlier. And then garlic, you only want to cook until you can smell it, really. Like, there, I can smell it. So I'm gonna turn down the heat a little bit. And then I have some frozen ginger, because I keep all of my ginger in the freezer, and then I use a microplane. Oh yeah, someone wants to know how to make the four minute rice. So if someone can comment about how you guys make the four minute rice in the Instant Pot, that would be very helpful, because I have no idea. So now I'm just uh, microplaning frozen ginger in. And this is just my favorite way to do ginger, because if you, chop it, it always gets all the, the hairy bits in there and I really don't like it. And I love the flavor of ginger, but sometimes if you get a big chunk, it's really, really spicy. So I should have it. Oh, yes, you do freeze your ginger. Yeah, I always freeze my ginger. Cause I feel like ginger molds really fast and I just throw it in the freezer. And it keeps for a long time in your freezer. All right, that's good. So, I put in aromatics. I need to put in, oh, there goes. Do you peel meat. before you freeze the ginger? No. I just, and then I just kind of peel it, um, you know, what when it's frozen, which is not super easy. Or, you know, if I'm microplaning, I just need a clean, like a surface of the, um, the ginger peeled. Otherwise, I think it can, it, it catches a lot of the skin. So I'm just gonna put salt. And then I'm not gonna put a ton because I'm still gonna put like other things that add salt, like fish sauce and coconut aminos. All right, so basically the meat is done. So now I'm just gonna throw in whatever else I'm gonna throw in. So I have those sauteed mushrooms that I had earlier. If you had uncooked mushrooms, you could um, saute them before you add the meat. Diana's on. Oh my goodness, hello Diana. Welcome to Periscope. It 
it's late. Isn't it like nine o'clock for you? You should have had a really hard day on the farm. <laughs> All right, so let's see. So I had mushrooms. <laughs> Here's my, I'm sorry that my organic farmer friend is watching me put in frozen spinach. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this is how it is in my house. Like, you know, this is how we get our vegetables. And so, because I only have a pound of meat, I'm going to put in like half a bag, which is a lot. Someone asked if this is an Asian dish. I don't know. It's like a, it's a fusion dish. It's a Nam Nam Paleo fusion dish. I don't know. It's not really Asian. I'm sure if my mom saw this, she'd be like, what are you making? But that's why I call it garbage stir fry, and I can season it however I want. Since you're doing stir fry, have you considered getting a cast iron wok? Uh... Not really. As Henry can attest, I don't really need any more cooking implements. You know, when we lived in San Francisco, we had, when we bought our house in San Francisco, it had a wok station built into the range, and we never used it. I don't yeah. think we used it once. I've heard a wok is really incredible, though. I have a lot of friends that, um, okay, so I just increased the heat, because when you add, like, frozen vegetables in, it'll bring down the temperature of the pan pretty fast. But look! Instant meat and veggies. And um, the frozen, like frozen kale and frozen spinach cook really fast. And my kids don't even notice that there's like all this green in here. Um, so it's the, I didn't realize you were not on paleo. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was just a random Asian lady picking on Periscope? But I am, I guess I am a random Asian lady picking on Periscope. Last time somebody said you looked like Margaret Cho, so maybe it's Margaret Cho's cooking show. I, I am, I'm Margaret Cho's cooking show. But I'm not as funny as Margaret Cho. I'm not as quick-witted or smart or funny. All right, so I think we're almost done. So I'm gonna season it and then I'm gonna add. You making any side dishes? Oh yeah, I have some zoodles. And then um, the kids like rice, so they're gonna have some rice. Um, so I think everyone's always like, well, how much are you supposed to add of like all the different seasonings? You just kind of add until it tastes okay. So I'm going to turn down a little to medium. Okay, and so I have this giant jug of fish sauce, so I always try to pour it on something so it'll slow down the amount that I put in. Where did you get that huge bottle of fish sauce? From the Red Bow people. They know I like it, so they sent it to me. They also know you use a lot of it. <laughs> I do use a lot. I think I just opened this recently, and it's already like half full. So, fish sauce does not add fishiness unless you add too much. It just adds umami and, um, and also some salt, but it's really, really good. And so then I taste it to make sure that... Someone asked, what is fish sauce? So it's fermented, I think they basically put a bunch of anchovies and salt in barrels and let it ferment. What's umami? You, Diana, you know what umami is. It is the sixth, is the sixth, the fifth. It's the fifth taste. <laughs> okay, I think that's good. Hmm. I was going to add coconut and minnows, but I think I've already made it salty enough. So I'm gonna just add some rice wine vinegar because I think it's good to have a little acid to balance. Or you can use lime. I'm gonna try this. And I don't like to double dip with the same spoon. Oh, thank you for all the hearts. And then I'm just eating my dinner. Hmm. Straight from the skillet. Mm-hmm. See, this is how we gotta do it. You have to just try it. Um, and the coconut aminos is sweeter than soy sauce, so it'll hopefully balance out everything. Where's the crackling chicken? I don't know. I didn't have time to make it. Has Gigi tasted your uh, garbage stir fry? No, I would never serve this to Gigi. If I were if I were hanging out with Gigi.
Gigi, I'd have him cook for me. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, <laughs> I told you I cooked for him once. You did? Yeah. When? That night that you had to go out yeah. and he was. Oh, uh, so this I'm just putting in some scallions and cilantro. But I basically just made a salad and reheated some chicken from the supermarket. Oh, I, I would never. <laughs> I would just pretend that both hands were broken and I <laughs> wouldn't know what to do. All right, so that's basically my garbage stir fry. The kids don't really like doodles, so I'm going to scoop theirs first. And then I will add my doodles directly into the pot for me and Henry, and then that's it. How did the Kahlua pig turn out yesterday? Good. I had, um, I posted on Instagram. Do you own a walk? Uh, nope. I, we had one at our old house in San Francisco. So now I'm actually going to turn off the heat because it's all done. And so garbage stir fry really is whatever you want. Like people are like, oh, what am I supposed to put and how much? You just, you just, you just make it with whatever you have. And the as long as you have fridge. the garbage in your fridge. And as long as you have ingredients that will add flavor and umami, then that's all that matters. Oh, so I have... Zoodle. I actually got this kind of cool zoodle maker thing from the OXO people and I kind of like this one better because you just like stick on like the zucchini like this is the end and then you just twist it and then you can throw this in the dishwasher. So I'm actually pretty excited about this. Look. Do you ever sprinkle fur coffee in your garbage surface? Yeah, you can. That's actually a great idea. I might do that. Because Seaweed also adds a lot of umami. Okay, so this this is just raw zoodles that I'm gonna put into this hot pan with the heat turned off. And then I'm just gonna toss it and it should um, cook enough without making it all watery and gross. And then... What's the name of that spiralizer again? Oh, it's like, a, it's just made by OXO. I don't know what it's called, but it's pretty cool. I think they just started selling it. And then you can have a thing to hold on if you want to, but I just, you know, cranked until, until there. But there are lots of really great spiralizers. I know that if you're really into spiralizing, um, you know, um, Allie from Inspiralized has her own spiralizer that's supposed to be pretty awesome. Um, and I had a Paderno one, which I like okay, but. I think it's gonna go in my appliance graveyard pretty soon, just because it's so clunky and I don't use it enough. Where did you get yours? Which one? The OXO one. I, the OXO people sent it to me. And as I said before, I don't like to accept freebies because then I feel like I have to talk about them, but this one I was pretty happy with. Um, and so, yeah, but I think you can buy them. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. There was also a question about paleo fur cake. Is there one with um, clean oh, ingredients? Oh yeah, yeah, people always ask about that. I have two. So here, this one by Urashima is their all natural brand. And this one just has uh, sesame and nori, not even salt. So you, this you can really totally make yourself. And then I had another one that I bought recently, which is not really fur cake. It's that seaweed gomazio. So it's more a sesame seeds with, um, and it's got dulse and salt and nori and kombu. So it is. Kondu23 asks, does it bring you joy, the spiralizer? This one does, because it's small <laughs> and I can throw it into the dishwasher. Whereas the other one I had, had like a lot more parts and I can't throw it. I don't think I can throw it in the dishwasher. And yeah, so I, I do like this. And it takes up so little space that, um, that I'm not too bothered by it. All right, I think I might actually crank up the heat a second because I like my Zuda al dente, but not super crunchy. And I think if I just turn up the heat for a second, it'll be done. And I think that's it. I know this is super boring. This is our dinner. How long, how long ahead of time can you spiralize your vegetables without, without them drying out? out? Hmm. I don't know, but I know that they sell it spiralized at the supermarket. So I bet if you put it in an airtight container, um, you could totally do it. I bet you could do it for like two days in advance, but I How haven't actually tried it. How many did you actually use? Two. 
So you this, do that with sweet potato? Yes, you can do sweet potatoes, people do carrots, people do parsnips, um, cucumbers, but I don't really like cu cooked cucumber, so I would do that in like a cold preparation. But you know, if you are looking for like spiralized recipes, you should definitely go check out, I think it's called inspiralized.com because that's her whole blog. Are you adding the sauce? No. Nope. So it's whatever I season the meat with. I just made, made sure that it's um, seasoned enough. But I added like fish sauce, coconut aminos, some rice wine vinegar. And now I actually want to add some of this, the, the furikake, because you guys gave me such a great idea. And that's it. I'm going to sign off unless there are last minute questions. If you have questions that I didn't answer, I'm always super responsive on Twitter at NomNomPaleo. Um, and I'm glad that you didn't find it boring. And I love that people are giving me hearts, so you can tap on the screen for hearts. And I will upload this on YouTube if you guys don't care that it's rambly and the quality is sucky. <laughs> what do you get with the hearts? What do you get? Nothing. I think, I don't know. I think, I, I don't know. It's just, it, it, They're it, pretty. Yeah, <laughs> and I think it's like validation that there's someone there on the other side of the screen. So anyway, have a great Friday, everybody. Bye.